Mario. Yes, sir. I have a lot of problems <laughs> with the depth on this team right now. I need you to try and help me figure out how we can fix it because I'm having a conniption and I need I need some free agent therapy. Every time so you help can you help me with some free agent therapy? I can therapy? help you with some free agent therapy, but every time you say the word fix it, I think of Al Pacino on any given Sunday. <laughs> fix it! No, just fix it! <laughs> All right, Paul, listen, you got me here. We just did the post game. Yep. We're talking about... Yep! <laughs> you want to go do karate in the garage? Yep! Yep! All right, so we're talking about the Buffalo Bills possibly adding a name or two to this roster, more importantly to the defensive side to see what is going on and what could change the landscape of this defense that has been together for almost 40 games now. You know, it's easy easy to get a book on some teams when they play together for that long, which is in and of itself is is a truly remarkable accomplishment in today's NFL with the free agency period and guys shifting teams. To keep this many players on one defense together for this long, it's pretty remarkable. But yeah. you get to be able to tell their weaknesses after that many games. So mm-hmm. I want you to hit me with some of these names of who the Buffalo Bills could bring in, possibly free agency, possibly by trade, of mm-hmm. who would improve this defense. To unpack that real quick, I yeah. want to just point out one thing that nobody has really talked about, and that's when you sign a free agent – so this just happened with Le'Veon Bell in Kansas City. One of the reasons Le'Veon Bell wasn't able to play for KC this week was not because he didn't have enough practices in. He has to clear COVID protocol, yes. right? And that's because he was out of COVID protocol when he got released by the Jets. If you get traded, you don't follow the same COVID protocol. You go from one facility to the next facility. Yeah. Everything's seamless, right? So the easiest way to add a player right now is via trade because you don't have to wait a week for them to go through COVID Very protocol. True. So if you're going to add somebody, the most effective way to do it right now is via trade. If you're going to sign somebody, you need to be a week ahead of your need, right? If you're going to sign somebody now, he's not going to play for you this weekend because he needs five days in the COVID protocol. um, And then he'll be eligible to practice with you. So again, the free agent (laughs) signing, it's kind of tough to add somebody via free agency, but there's some really fun names out there. And there are some guys that are out there via trade that, I think the Bills could look at, but the most effective way to get somebody right away is via trade. I think trading definitely signifies to the team and to the fan base. Now, they don't really have to signify anything to the fan base. They're, they're an organization. They have to win. That's what their goal is to do. Mm-hmm. However, right. it would signal that they understand that there's probably a problem and that they need to fix it mm-hmm. and need outside help to do so, which is fine. Yep. I mean, they got, they got some cap room. They got some things to, to, to work with. If they're just talking about a Band-Aid for the rest of the season, I'm fine with that. But mm. something has to happen because what's happening right now in these past two games is not working. Right. And yep. maybe the offense being so explosive in the first four games probably covered up things longer than we thought it was covering it up. Mm-hmm. So we're going to try to take a look at some free agents that, uh, or trades that the Buffalo Bills could execute to finally see, you know what, this would shake up things really nicely on the offense and defense side of the ball. Who's the first guy you got? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put one right down the pipe for you, and you're gonna love it. You know I'm not that good uh, at baseball though. Uh yeah, I know, I know that. <laughs> Here's a player that you could acquire right now. It's on a failing team, right? So the Falcons are just bad. Ooh, they are bad. I love when you go to the Falcons. Bad. Well, and again, you've got you know coaching issues there, right? Coaching you've change. Got, well, not only that, you. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to look to try and get rid of maybe some mistakes of GM and coach past, right? Yes. You're paying Dante Fowler a lot of money. Who? You mean Dante the Dante Fowler, Fowler we talked about two years ago about them getting? Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, why and, you put it on a plate for me like that? Well, and let's not forget, it would cost them $15 million to trade him against the cap. It would cost them a fortune to trade him. Oh, they're in purgatory. Down there, they're down. right there, but they got problems, right? Yeah. But you take a couple picks and you throw them down the Falcons' way, and that might be enough to wiggle free some of that cap room. What picks though? Because we're talking about a former third overall pick, aren't we? 
Yeah, but you're also looking at you could still restructure Fowler right now. So they could restructure you could. Fowler. You could. And then, uh, yeah, they could re- restructure Fowler to more base salary because his, his guaranteed base salary is only $2 million. So he's not a ton of money. And like, he cost them 15 on top of that? Good Lord. Well, it's because it was a three-year, $45 million deal. So that, <laughs> that's a brand new deal. But I think you're willing to get out of that if you're Atlanta, right? You're willing to walk away from that right now. You do not need. His production, he's played in six games. He's made five tackles. Where are they putting 11, him? 11 combined. Now, here's the thing. Where does he play? Him. Is he strictly a man in, with his hand in the dirt? Because that's where yeah. I want him. Yeah, he's he's playing that edge rush role. That's okay. All right. All right. Only playing 63% of snaps. So, again, I think for the money that they invested in him, I think you're you're ready to walk away from that. That would be a very interesting take to bring Fowler. Now, what is he – I don't know. I know Fowler as a pin the ears back and just go and kill somebody. That's what I yep. remember about Fowler, especially yep. in L.A. But right. what is he? I wonder how effective this guy has been against the run. That's well, the he's he's a very Jerry Hughes type end, right? Oh, we need so another you're gonna one go of those. Get, I think you need to kind of take what you can get this, <laughs> right? Like, don't you kind of have to take what you can get? I I think that. A shakeup of that magnitude probably would send a message, but the ramifications of that, are you getting rid of a current D end to sign him? Yeah. Yeah. Is it is, is it Murphy? Yeah, it's Murphy. Okay. I mean, it's the money the money says so, right? You're, the money says so. This is a total shake up as far as a McDermott Frazier defense is concerned, which I Big like time. though. Yep. Big time. This is yeah, more they, I they wanna, need some yeah. They need some spice. You know, there's no spice on that defense at all. I, I, I know Jerry's a high motor guy, but Jerry isn't the Jerry from 2014, 2015. Jerry was getting held up and they moved him to front side. They moved him to front side DN and he was still getting caught up all day long. So it's the writing is on the wall there. They know that they need to move on from old Murphy and Jerry. Yeah. Um, this is the best way to give you that player for the next three years. And you know what? Hmm. He's only 26 right now. It's wow, a decent really? investment. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a decent investment. It's going to cost you money, right? But yeah. you've spent so much money along this defensive line, you could walk away from most of it next season and, and easily afford Fowler. Plus, it, it tends to, to to favor the the prototype that they go for because you got to remember Hughes is the last, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, the last holdover from the previous regime. Who that the first guy that being Reed extended Ferguson. Well, I always forget about Reed because he's, I know. He's Don't forget a, about Reed. I'm never forgetting about Snapflow69 Twitter's handle. <laughs> uh, but that being said, there's Reed and Hughes. First guy being extended, extended him two years because there was a lot of pass rushers coming up, and he got him at a for a cheap rate. Um, so what you're saying is that for the foreseeable future, what happens in 2021? I mean, I'm, we're going to talk about this year. I'm not talking about the future. I'm talking about. I just want to mention in 2021, you you're pretty much going into the season with AJ Epineza and Dante Fowler as your edge guys. Right. Oh. I think that looks a lot better. At the same, a with better. a cheaper price, though. And you, and you have Addison. And you still have Addison for next year, too. I, I mean, that's barring right. that he doesn't, you know, break a hip. But um, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I, like the, I like the move, but like I said, it, it, it would signify, listen, we recognize that this pro, this team has probably played for together, played together for 40 games and has done some successful things, but we have to try to get a spark we have to get a spark here somewhere. And I think the right. spark not necessarily comes at the front wall, but comes in the back end, Paul. Okay. I'm going to throw a name at you. You don't have to All trade right. for him. You don't have to give up any assets. He's just sitting at home. All right. Earl Thomas. Oh, he's an attitude problem. He's not going to – McDermott's what not doing this. What this defense needs is an attitude. This defense does not have an attitude right now. You're telling me that he would have stood idly by in Tennessee when they were getting drug up and down the field. Do you think he would have stood idly by when Kansas City was running for 209,000 yards? What I'm saying is that I think a nickel presence, the guy can cover. The guy can come up and punch you in the mouth. He can be that Jamal Adams type guy. I mean that that's what the the basically what you're talking about for Dante Fowler in comparison to Jerry Hughes, I'm talking about with with uh what the what the Seahawks did to 
um, uh, Earl Thomas. I know it was a couple of years removed, but they just they 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 traded up. <laughs> they got a they got a newer model. Now they have Adams there, um, and he he's just he's just a clone of, of of Earl Thomas. And if you put Earl Thomas with the other two safeties that you have on this team, you're gonna have a very dynamic player that you could spice up this defense and switch up things around, especially if you don't have number fifty eight in the lineup. Well, I think I think the Earl Thomas piece is arguable because of your lack of linebacker depth right now. Yes. Right? Like, I, I think it's arguable that you could go after somebody like Earl Thomas and have it be reasonably acceptable, right, yeah. given the linebacker depth on the team. And I think I because the of the fact that he's been on the couch for a number of weeks, that dri- each day he's on the couch, it drives the price down. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of with you there, right? But yeah. the question is, if you're Earl Thomas – would you want to be putting film out on this Bills defense? I wouldn't want to be putting film out on this Bills defense. I think that's – right now he doesn't have a job. So if he wants to reinvent his career as one of this Tyron Matthew, Jamal Adams type guy, I mean, even though he was the guy that started it, I mean, this defense has pieces in place that he can be a spark plug for. I know off the field stuff. Sometimes that off the field stuff I just want to forget – and I know my brother has been on this show before, and he said, you want to give me 22 convicts and I'll win the Super Bowl? I understand he makes that. That's going to the extreme. But I think you need some more nasty on this defense, and I think mm-hmm. he would probably provide that for you. Well, and instead of taking a guy who I think doesn't want to put film out and to a guy who <laughs> needs to put film out, and that's Darren Lee, former inside linebacker Ooh. for the Jets and Kansas City. So that's – I mean – there we go. To me, that's a guy who has to play. He's got to play you football. You think? Yeah, he does. His his value is in the toilet, right? Think, he went to uh... KC. He couldn't get on the field in KC. When he did, it didn't look real great. No. And I'm not saying that he in, in instantly solves your problem, but it gives you another inside linebacker that allows you to be a bit more versatile than you are right now. Um, so, I granted, mm. I mean – I don't love, I don't love it, right? But if we're looking at a player who has a necessity to play, it's it's Duran Lee. Well, like I, he's got to play. I, he's got to play. I under- His career will be over if he doesn't get. Oh, on the absolutely. Field this year. I understand. How old is he? Twenty six. Twenty six. So he's twenty. I I can't. Thomas is thirty, isn't he? He's or he's nearing. Mm-hmm. He's up there. Here's he the, does have a four game suspension still pending from the league. By the way, who Thomas? Uh, Lee. Oh, Lee. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, that puts a different paint job on things. I, I think what you're talking about in Fowler and Lee are two guys that are going to be, one's an insurance policy, one's a 50%, 60% rotational guy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You put Thomas on this team, he starts immediately, and he plays a number of snaps for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I mean, if you would have thought about it three years ago, and you if you could have got Norman and, and Thomas on this team... It would have been well, sick. I know they're up there in age. I know they're a little long in the tooth, but it's – you need some help. You need you yeah. need a spark on that defense because there's a lot of times they get drug up and down the field. I don't see anyone yelling at anybody. Well, I yeah. I don't no, want to see that. I agree with you there. So let me ask. do you? So what – if you had to pick one position on this defense to really go after – to, to build that spark, right, to give that edge, what position is it? Do you really think it's – you think it's that nickel linebacker role, don't you? I think it is because I think eventually you're going to figure out how to stop the run and then teams are going to want to throw on you. And Thomas solves an insurance policy for Milano if he goes down because you put him next to Edmonds. You don't have to drop Poyer down. Okay, right. so you keep him up there to help with the pass and he can help with the run. Right. Eventually – what happens is you you just play and when you when you bring Milano in and you want to bring Thomas in as a, as a nickel, you could rotate if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. So you have you start off with Thomas in the box, and Hyde and Poyer up high, and then you switch your defensive alignment mm-hmm. so that Poyer comes down and Hyde and Thomas are back there. And you're talking about a guy that you want to combine Thomas with, with, with Norman, you're talking about the experience and the number of years these guys have played. There's not many things that you're going to fool them with. I I really think Thomas Earl Thomas is a culture fit, right? So let me throw another yeah. name at you. It's yeah. one, okay, I think you have another name that you would throw at me. 
So if we're looking at another guy, similar position that he could play, who's your next guy on your list that you think could do it? It was uh, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. There you go. Yep. Uh, culture fit, yes. When he went to Dallas, I thought, man, that's going to make that Dallas team. But, and then he was just gone. And he's another guy mm-hmm. who's a hard-hitting Alab- former Alabama guy. You know, you want to mm-hmm. talk about – a lot of those guys that come out of Alabama, that you know, they, they don't play on that defense unless Saban is a hundred percent concerned. You know, knows that right. they know what they're doing. So he's a guy that knows what he's doing. He's bounced around the league. I'm not really sure about his age, but he, he he's I don't think he's up there. But he played in uh, played in Green Bay. He played in Chicago, I believe. Uh, that's not, that doesn't matter. But the point is this: um, there's another guy that I think I think if you just add an element to this defense to make it just give it a spark here or there. Now. A lot of people might say Marcel Darius, bring him back in because you need help up front, and I understand that that you definitely need help up front. But I think eventually, um, this is a passing league, and there's a reason they call it that. It's because teams are, want to throw. The teams are going to want to throw. Mm-hmm. Um, Lyman would yeah, ra- would rather run. I understand that, but it's, there's there's very I to your point. There's very few teams that. Uh, their intention is to run the football a majority of times. Absolutely. They really are. There's very few teams. Unfortunately, one of those teams is in your division. <laughs> well, okay, so let me ask. Are you, would you rather have Marshall? If you had to pick one of of the next two or three, right? You have to pick one. You got to sign one of them. Okay. Marcel Darius, Gerald McCoy. Which one are you taking? Ooh, McCoy. Why? Because I think that his production over his years was better than, than Darius. Darius is still yeah. not even 30 yet, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Darius still isn't even 30. That's the craziest part. No, I don't. I think you want to talk about a culture fit. Did Darius fit here? I mean, did he ever have any issues other than the drag racing when he was here? I mean, I think that was the issue, though, was that there was Darius never really took ownership of having to be the face of a franchise. When you're picked that high, you have to understand that you're the face of a franchise. I don't think he ever took that seriously. Yeah, I mean, well, and there's no question about the guy's ability. He can eat up bodies in the middle. He can do some things for you. I don't know if he took plays off or whatever, but I just remember that. I mean, I would like Gerald McCoy just because I, I know that he's enjoyed success in his career. Mm-hmm. So he mm-hmm. knows what it's like when that happens. Um. Another run stopping guy, he can get to the quarterback as well. I just I you know that I for me I would take I would take McCoy over over Darius because I don't know. That's a tough well, one. Well McCoy though. unfortunately McCoy McCoy's out for this season, so I mean it's not it was just a question. Oh it was just a question. Why did you that's a loaded question. Well then Darius. Yeah. That Darius. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> 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 I need someone I can play this year, damn it. I think the Bills brought in Tremaine Johnson already. Um, he's 30, former uh, corner for the Rams and the Jets. I think the Bills brought him in once already. Um, I think he played with the Panthers too, but I think it was post McDermott. Yeah. Um, they still have ties down there, though. That's fine. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't materialize in a contract offer to him now. Um, but this is why you have so many practice squad spots. You could literally sign any of these existing free agents, put them on your practice squad, and then they're they can be game day ready for you because you can call up guys from the practice squad. Absolutely. That's that's we saw the Bears do it with Lamar Miller, and it's it was a genius move for them because now they've got a veteran on their practice squad, right? That's yep. just ready ready for them when when he needs to be ready. Sitting in the bullpen. Yep. That's Absolutely. exactly it. And the but the Bills aren't playing that game. No, they're right. Not. They're still they're still playing the long game with their practice squad. They really need to look a little bit more short term because I think there's some value out there for folks. I think um, they see value in some of the guys that they picked up that they scouted themselves. So they want to yeah, keep those guys. I get it. I they want to develop those guys. I understand that. I mean, that's I get it. They can coach anybody up. Remember, Paul? Give me for the last time, Tony Jefferson. <laughs> Jefferson. Most people are going to say, Paul, who the hell is Tony Jefferson? Why don't you enlighten them? Oh, yeah. Huge fan of Tony Jefferson. It's a little engine that could. Um, He was a former strong safety. actually played middle linebacker for um, Arians in Arizona. Uh, Went to Baltimore. Signed a pretty big deal with Baltimore. Um, Just hasn't really materialized for them. But he's sort of an undersized guy. But, again, he played inside linebacker, former safety, and now is back at safety for Baltimore. Um, up until last year, very available. Um, he was undrafted, but, um, 
You know, you need a guy that's going to come in and play 35% of your snaps in a nickel linebacker role. He's got experience at both safety and actually playing inside linebacker in a three down role. So, um, yeah, it, yeah. He's just nasty. I'm definitely down with Tony Jefferson. He's just nasty. I'm definitely down with it. Yep, yeah, I'm down. You talk about a culture fit. I mean, he was in Baltimore, and they have a specific culture that is a defense first mentality. I mean, yep. before Jackson got there, that's what they were. Mm-hmm. And so, right. Um, I think, it, it, like I said, the biggest thing that you talked about was if, if it's going to be a culture fit. And right. a lot of these guys on paper might might be great. Like, I only mentioned Earl Thomas because I know what the guy does in between the chalk. Well, let so me, that's let why me make, it's tough. Let me make a, ta- a case for Tony Jefferson. Here's why I think he's one of, like, the little gems that nobody knows about that I hope the Bills ultimately sign. Okay. So the last – last five seasons we're going to exclude 2019 because he only played 29 percent of the snaps at baltimore only played in five games so we're going to exclude last season okay but in 20 2018 through 2014 between both arizona and baltimore he had and these numbers aren't crazy right but he played 83 percent of the snaps 99 percent of the snaps 86 percent of the snaps 72 and 64 right so it's really solid big snap shares he never had a season over 100 tackles But over 70% of his tackles were solo. And he was bringing in 74, 78, 96, 78, and 77 tackles. So really solid production. And most of those, and a vast majority of those, were solo tackles. Right? Mm. That's a guy that I want. Because that's a guy who, left on an island, is going to be able to bring a ball carry down by himself. And I will be honest with you, the linebacking group that I saw against Kansas City and against Tennessee really failed to do that. Yeah. I mean, to your point, I mean, just looking up some more advanced stats about the guy. 59 games played, four picks, uh, 19 passes defended, eight forced fumbles, 315 tackles. I mean, he had 17 quarterback hits. So he's sniffing around the line, too. Mm -hmm. He had eight and a half sacks Mm -hmm. to go along with that. So three fumble recoveries as well. But there's a guy, you know, just like I talked about with Thomas, maybe to a degree – um, that nobody knows about, but I, I, you need another Swiss Army knife on this defense. I think you need right. a guy like that. So, right. um, well, it's obvious the- when you bring Poyer down in the box what he's doing. If you had another right. guy like that, you don't know what they're doing on defense, and that's what that's the right. that's the whole goal of being on defense is that you want you want the offenses guessing wrong, and mm-hmm. that's what these guys do for you. Thomas right. Jefferson, you want to bring in Fowler to come in to, to eventually take Hughes's role. You want to bring in Lee to, if you want to give um, Edmonds like three or four games off or something like that mm-hmm. as an insurance policy. Those are things that you can do to try to revamp this defense because honestly, Paul, if they don't fix it soon, you can't. You're not going to win games in the playoffs, fifty-five mm-hmm. to forty-eight. But the Bills right now, they're carrying two running backs with Christian Wayne and Antonio Williams. They've got a safety in Josh Thomas. They've got tight end Nate Becker. They've got multiple wide receivers on the practice squad. Like, they're just not doing themselves any favors Why with how they're managing their practice squad. And it's really concerning to me because there's guys out there who can help your team right now. If you sign Tony Jefferson, just as an example, to a practice squad contract, he'd probably take it at this point you get the two games out of him the practice squad and then you can make your decision as to whether you're going to keep him or not right yeah. if you don't yeah. want to keep him cut him sign somebody else who cares not going to cost you anything costs you nothing right this is the perfect time to be turning and burning your practice squad you should literally not have the same practice squad guys the whole season you should be able to turn and burn work in those long-term guys as well as a couple short-term veterans and some positions of need the bills are failing to do that right now there's a lot of opportunity to make yourself better and the bills are just screwing it up Ooh, coming in hot paul i'm just mad about it like i just there's there's opportunity to fix your team and they and you're just not doing it We've had it in the chat before, Clay Matthews. I don't think he solves any problems for you right now because you have no, trouble with coverage, and I understand right. that. Would you kick uh, before we you know we head out of here? Do you kick the tires on Eric Reed? Why not? He fits the mold, right? Yeah, he fits what he fits what you need. And I agree. You got to get Poyer out of that nickel linebacker dropping down safety role. I know that's something that he's been effective at before, but you're just not being successful with it right now. Teams are not worried about like teams there. They can attack you in the interim. They don't, you don't need to worry about protecting deep. And that's what Micah Hyde brings you is that deep protection. 
but uh, Jordan Poyer's not scaring anybody. There's down enough. The line. There's enough tape on yeah. Poyer coming down into the box and doing what he does that yeah. you know how to game plan against it. Exactly. That's you need you need some fresh uh, fresh blood on that. Right, team. and it was obvious the Bills got pulled uh, pulled away multiple times in the game against Kansas City, and every time Mahomes would motion somebody over, leave one side naked, and then it was open field for him just to run. That's what they vacated. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yep, exactly. No question. Oh, decisions, decisions. 